Welcome back to another episode of Adapt, Attack, Advance. This is episode number 16. I have the privilege of having two wonderful guests, uh, Gerard and Tracy Newkirk. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. Ab absolutely. Well, if you would, share with the folks watching and listening who you are and your businesses and, and what you do. Ladies, always you first. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm Gerard Newkirk. I'm the CEO of KWH Pony and now Genesis Block. Uh, our focus, or of course, my focus with KWH Pony is based on renewable energy, providing off grid uh, services for those that don't have access and provide renewable energy. And um, with Genesis Block, it's a community collaborative with a focus on providing uh, an environment for entrepreneurs and small businesses to be able to have a workspace and also for the community to have a social space. Um, we're gonna have an art gallery in there. So we wanna create an environment that's comfortable to have uh, community conversations, it's comfortable for people to come collaborate, uh, solve issues that are going on in the community and uh, have a unique workspace, a unique uh, work environment. All right, so I'm Tracy Newkirk and I um, am the founder and um, certified personal resilience um, practitioner for Nexo, which is a consulting company that helps um, the happy build a team and want to do a lot of work around resilience, um, assessing their energy flow as you manage your working chain. And I am the co-founder with Gerard of Genesis Block, so we really don't need to explain because he's already kind of <laughs> Well, there's, there's a lot of things that the two of you are involved in. I'm so glad to have you on. And um, I, we have about 25 minutes or so, so I might have the opportunity just to have you back on to talk about your both individual businesses at, at a later date, but would love to talk with, with the two of you more about Genesis Block, because I know that is, um, that is a passion project that is near and dear to both of you, and it is very much needed in the greater Wilmington area, and I'd love to talk more about that with you. Uh, so let's dive right in. So it's going to be three parts to the uh, to the episode. So we'll, we'll dive right into part one about the adapting. So adapting in its nature is to make fit uh, often by modification or to become adapted. So during these interesting and very uncertain and unprecedented times, what have the two of you be, been doing with regards to Genesis Block to adapt to where we are now? One of the biggest things that we did um, to adapt to where we are now is to work with our, bro our broker, Terry Espy, to get a unique addition to our contract, our lease contract, that we wouldn't take um, ownership of the building until um, we, um, after whatever the stay for COVID-19 has been lifted. And that has been probably the biggest thing that we've done from an adaption perspective, from the adaptive piece to not um, take on a building that we can't do anything with for however long we don't know when how long that building. So that's a huge that was a huge thing for us from that perspective. What would you share back? Uh and also for us, um, because you know it's gonna be membership based. We're gonna have mm -hmm. a co-working space and uh, community membership. So we've kind of adapted our marketing now to forming conversations across a wide range. You know, we're very active in um, COVID nineteen small business resources group. Tracy's been very uh, active as a conduit between the small businesses and the Chamber of Commerce and other, other government institutional frameworks. And we've also taken the social media and tried to build out, you know, we even have Tracy's term like IDG Juice Community. It's a juice community, but it's also a wellness community. So it's allowed us to hone our skills as collaborators and building a community. So it's a so we've adapted in that, no, we don't have, obviously, those open, but we can still build out what that collaborative community environment is going to look like. And we're doing it face-to-face -face and interactive uh, over social media and over the internet. So, so that's interesting. So it's an interesting point. So, uh, you know, I, I saw the article in uh, Greater Wilmington Biz Journal about Genesis Block as a whole, and then also kind of the carve out of the provision on the, the lease. And that's, that's great because right now a lot of businesses, small businesses are looking at just the level of uncertainty mm -hmm. and the fact that your, your certainty kicks in once we're through this, that, <laughs> that, which, is, which is a great thing. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit more uh, because George, you brought something up a little bit about 
kind of a, you're you're essentially correct me if I'm wrong. Genesis Block is essentially in a in a startup. Your other businesses are not, but this is a startup phase. So you're essentially going virtual from the very beginning because you've been forced to go virtual, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We actually, when we get off this at six thirty, uh, we're going to be doing a, a virtual free workshop. So you tune into that. Mike. <laughs> And it's going to be preparing startups and entrepreneurs, uh, mastering the art of the pitch. Uh, we're working with one million cubs here, you know, that's come over uh, in a few moments and uh, lately. And so we're preparing, uh, we have a group called Entrepreneurs Connected, run out of New Beginning, a New Beginning Christian Church here in Castlemaine. Okay. So we're taking those entrepreneurs, but we're inviting the entire public. But we're taking them and we're going through a workshop on how to prepare them for the pitch. It's the company, the pitch business if it's their idea. And so that this would normally be something that we would do physically out of the business block. Mm -hmm. But we've had to transition this to a virtual platform. So we, we are we're kind of like uh, digital nomads now. Do do you think that by uh, this kind of still staying in that kind of vein of adapting, do you think that by um, being virtual it is providing the two of you more opportunities to engage with businesses that even if we were in normal times, so to say, that uh, you may not be, would have been normally engaged with? I think it has definitely broadened our approach. And uh, it's funny, I do the women's leadership influential leader this morning to talk about what we take out of this on the other side. And I think some of the things, some of the things that we are um, doing right now from a virtual perspective are things that I really want to keep um, um, that, we actually feel like we communicate enough right now um, socially that we're connected to the people in our circle, the people that we're supporting. We feel like we have a bond with them even though we're not seeing them. So how can you transition that into um, once you're post COVID-19 and our new normal starts to come into play, how do we keep that in the new normal? That feeling that you are connected, but you're not there. And you also have the opportunity to have the connection piece. If you don't drop that piece that you're doing engagement on social media, I think that piece is going to be really important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, th this is this has been great so far. Let's. Do you have anything that, as far as from adapting, that maybe we might have missed, or you weren't ready to move on into maybe the kind of what you're doing right now to attack attack the problem from a mindset as well as a, what's that? I'm sorry. You're in attack mode. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so let's dive into it. So, so I view it as a couple of things. A mindset, you know, between the ears is is the biggest challenge I think right now, just because there's so much um, info out there. You're trying to disseminate and sort all that information. Uh, so attacking, just as as far as one of the definitions of, as a transitive verb, is to set upon or work against forcefully, and to set to work on and attacking a problem. Uh, so with regards to the challenges that we're having, how are the two of you, and you touched on a little bit just before in the, in the previous segment, but how are the two of you attacking the actual problem with the business side of it to make it resourceful? And then also how are the two of you keeping, um, keep, kind of keeping a level, level head about yourself during this period of time as well? Well, I think for us, it's like you, you alluded to a little bit earlier, that's a ton of information. So what we've been trying to do is to curate that information. So we've been trying to help small businesses actually with all of the nuances, the care that, um, PIDL, PPP, and for our businesses that are just starting up, what is the market going to look like? So what we've been trying to do is to not only disseminate the information as far as what the uh, acts or as far as what the legislation is being taken advantage of, we're also having to do even more market research to prepare our, our entrepreneurs for what the post-COVID-19 world will look like so that when they enter into the market, it reflects what the new um, conditions are. You know, we have um, a few food entrepreneurs, we have uh, someone that's in wellness, we have someone in the travel industry, so their entire model is going to have to shift somewhat. For mm -hmm. So what those actual restrictions are. So for us, uh, part of us attacking it coming up with systems and structure and process all of this information, but to get it in a point that is curated so it helps out our small business and our entrepreneurs. Um, of course, he'd give me the mindset piece to be able to say his code. 
being a resilience coach, he definitely give that part to me. And so, you know, and I've talked to a lot of um, small businesses about this. It's so easy right now to be overwhelmed with the noise and how you can keep the compartment alive and not get overwhelmed with everything that's going on. And I think right out of the gate, um, I know one of the things that I always say is so critical when you, if you want to uh, have high performance is everybody on the team understands what the, um, the true strategic goal is, not task of the day. And so, what, and then uh, from a resilience perspective, the more structure you can put around and make it um, for me, for me, for me, because my strength is not that great. So, I need that structure when we start to go through um, and teach change. And so, what we did was immediately sat down and decided what are our three goals? What are the three big things that we're going to center it on? So we can have something to measure. If it doesn't align with these three things, so it, uh, we're not going to be able. Uh, we're not going to put a whole lot of energy there. We're going to, and that was the way that we, um, from a mindset perspective, we put in place to manage our energy flow. Um, I did a, um, a, a sharing on um, energy and said, "Don't let others hijack your energy flow." So that's the way we keep our energy flow from being hijacked. We focus on our wellness, our health, the businesses that we have. To do trying to keep those op more operationalized and look at how we can do structures. And then um, staying connected on social and oh, on That's all right. <laughs> that was a, um, <laughs> I know, we're on live and that's a, a, what is it, what are the, the robocall. <laughs> That's all right. No, you were, Tracy, you were in a great flow there. So I, you, I, you said a few things that I want to kind of elaborate a little bit more and kind of ask you a few more questions if that's all right. That's good. So, so the big thing that you said there and the biggest takeaway that I, I received from what you said was get rid of the clutter, eliminate the distraction and focus, focus in on the core things that are driving the two of you towards your goals. Can you talk more about why it's so important to eliminate all the other distractions because right now there's there's 30 days maybe more maybe less but we're almost 30 days into this thing so far and it's so easy to get distracted if you don't have the proper structure can so can you talk more about that um, yeah and i will give you some example an, an example too that i had to work through for me that i really was challenged with but what i really mean by that is um who, we heard while we were in the process of this, I think it was um, Dr. Baker said, don't be distracted by the distraction. And it's so easy if you're not anchored to where what your true goal and purpose in a season or a time or as you're working on a project, you can be pulled off in so many different directions and you only have that finite amount of energy to make the decision. And so if you use all of your energy over here on what's not core, when the core things come, you don't have enough to give, or you, you get into that space where I say you start making low um, resilient. You have a bunch of low resilient moments that end up hurting relationships, impacting how people feel about you, blasting out really bad things on Facebook. You know, so, um, it, it, but you know, we're going to be a community. I said, are we going to be the ununited states after this is over? Oh, what? I said, you sure. know, the way we're treating each other. And, but I see so many low resilient moments happening on Facebook right now. And I'm like, I think, you know, just slept on that light overnight. You might have to say that. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. And, so um, and I think, we, and, and you know, we have, so I chair the African American Business Council here for the Chamber of Commerce. And so, uh, you know, there are so many different things going on. You know, COVID 19 is impacting the African American community more. We need all this to happen, you know. But when I said what my core things were, um, you know, and I'm very involved in the community and I can call for lots of things or, you know, share this, speak on this or whatever. And I had to point blank aside, these are the three things. Mm -hmm. Our health was number one. And then our businesses, keeping them up and running and going. I do a lot of charity work, but right now I am incredibly focused on yeah. businesses because I only have a finite amount of energy. And then making sure that the um, communities that we support, our, our juice community and our entrepreneurs and our small businesses, that's where our energy is going. And it, is so, it would be so easy for me to be pulled all over the place if I didn't have that gauge to measure, no, that's not what I'm going to take on because it doesn't fit in this category. And it's, it, it can be very har a harsh way for some people to look at it like, well, there's no black and white in that. 
I said, well, I, there's no extra energy either. I mean, so, I mean, I have to have a cutoff somewhere because you're not, I'm not going to get an extra flow. I got a finite amount, and if I don't preserve it and have opportunities where I replenish it, then I'm not going to for any of this. Well, it, is it, is it self-care? Like, the t yeah. uh, I, self care and, and a little bit of, I mean, it may sound a little harsh, but self-preservation, because you can't, you know, you have to save the ship. You can't, you know, you can't, uh, you, you got to plug the holes in the ship first and then you figure out how to get it to land, right? You know, it's. Well, nature yeah. is self-preservation. Yes, and when you're on the airplane, whose mask do you put on first if it's going down? <laughs> that is so, that, you know, that is, that is so simple. We hear it every time we fly, but, uh, but when it comes to situations like this, that, that is a great reminder to that. Well, this is, uh, the attacking part, this is great. So I'm hope I'm hopeful that people get a lot out of this because discipline over distraction is kind of the theme that I'm hearing. The, the discipline over distraction is the theme that I'm hearing. So let's talk about advancing and using this as an opportunity to grow and advance uh, and push forward. So advancing by its definition is to accelerate the growth or progress of, uh, to bring forward for notice, consideration, or acceptance. But the biggest one I like to, it's a very simple one, but it's to move forward and to make progress. So how, so how are the two of you moving forward and advancing during this period of time and using it to your advantage rather than to your demise? Some of the, you probably take the bulk of that answer, but I would say the piece that I am most excited about from an advancing perspective, we got to meet with the architect. Um, this week, what day is it? Oh, okay, so we. I think it's Tuesday. No, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yeah, Wednesday. So we got to meet with the architect, and what I'm most excited about is, you know, most of the time when you get a project like this, as soon as you sign, it's like boom, 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 boom. Everything has to. You got to get everything lined up, and everything has to be in order because you're at that deadline, and you got to make it happen. And just the time to breathe and you know we had a great conversation and dream a little bit and and not feel that intense pressure but we're moving we're advancing we're moving the business forward because of course the, you can, if we, during this time if we can get all our design work done and all our renderings done and start some of the construction we'll be so much further along when this is lifted and so that's the piece that i see has been from an advancing perspective we've been able to do and um and not feel like we're behind in getting that done. Yeah, I, I agree with that on a thousand percent. One of the things, obviously, this is our first community collaborative. You know, the concept <laughs> is kind of new, and not only is the concept new, this is our first time taking on building environments, creating our building our environments. So it's we're going to be able to advance because it's given us more time to talk with people, to get more ideas. Um, we've had so many people kind of give us ideas and suggestions through our website, our landing page is now up. We've been asking the people in the community, you know, what do you want this to look like? Because ultimately what we're doing, we're building a space and environment for our community to collaborate, interact, to work, network. So advancing out, I don't think, even though obviously this is a, a, a tremendous Without the circumstance, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to, to really build in the things that we need to do in order to be successful in our venture. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like less is more sometimes. So mm -hmm. like, like Tracy was saying earlier, when you're in that frantic pace and everything's kind of like call and response and it's knee jerk, you don't have time to build an environment. The difference between building out, you know, a paper or service and building an environment. The environment has so much you need to have a lot of impact. I mean, you need to have a lot of uh, feedback from the people that are using it. So we're using that kind of like our platform to advance and to post over yeah. uh, environment, business environment and community environment. And getting members because yeah. this has given us time for people to really get uh, to understand the concept. I think we were just, just playing around one evening on our walk and we thought we, we said let's coach the tour the building with the um, community. And we were taking a walk, we had our sweat clothes, and, uh, and we walked down and um, went in and, did, and uh, did a live video. And I promise you, I think the last time we looked, 1,100 people had viewed the video. That's and I was like, I think I'd dress better if I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be people, I'd put on some makeup or something. 
But um, but so that people, we we actually have time during this period that more people are probably going to know about Genesis Blog and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I had someone stop stop me on the day I was walking out here to say, look, what do I need to do to get a membership? I want to put, I want to bring my business over there as well. So I think just having this time to just be on social media and sharing about it and draw some of our member companies that have already signed up, he's promoting them and that's causing other companies to stop and say, well, wait a minute, I want to be a part of that. And so, um, and so that, I feel like when we get ready to move in, we'll probably be full. Um, that's great. Full. That's great. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. So it, it sounds like, it, that, you know, and that's what I love about both of your attitudes. You're finding the silver lining in this. It sounds like it's giving you more opportunity to be more deliberate than reactionary. Yeah. And, and, and really create the culture and the environment that you're really looking for. Well, uh, I know that you have something coming up pretty soon, so I want to be respectful of your time. Last yeah. question that I want to ask you is, could you both elaborate more as to what Genesis Block is and then how people can get in touch with you and what services you provide to the, two, to, to the local businesses in the greater Wilmington area? All right, so I want to talk to you. Okay. So for, for me, um, and when you speak Genesis Blog, it is um, exactly what the word, it's a community collaborative. To me, it's the place where if you are an innovator in the community, or an entrepreneur startup, or, a, or you've got an idea that you want to start up an organization, and you just want to be around people, like-minded, that are focused on the creativity oh, part, nine, and, nine, the, nine. and the collaborative, every time I talk, the creative part and the collaborative part of our community, and really about um, move energy, bringing in energy that moves things things forward. We have a lot of um, groups out there that deal with past and what happened and all that. The focal point at Genesis Block is going to be how do we move forward and, and build a community that's based on collaboration and creativity. And so that's if that's the environment that you want to be in, then go to genesisblogilm.com and put your information in so you can stay in the list to get information from us. I, I love that. I, I, Tracy, I love that. So it's like a, it's a la- essentially a launching pad to, to, to launch out and go. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, and being around like-minded, you know, that want to grow. Because that's what I, and that's what I told him. I said, they've got to have our energy vibe. They've got to be ready to want to go forward. Because that's exactly, and that's, I think that's what helps me to grow with people with differences that have different opinions on things, but are like-minded from a perspective of wanting to move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And bringing those differences together in a creative space, I think that will help um, the community grow so much. I want to read off our vision. I want to read this first. Okay. Speaking, but we have three points. So our vision is to build local small business and entrepreneurial ecosystem, which is why you see us work so much with like uh, entrepreneurs and actually uh, providing resources to COVID nineteen. We're working on the construction and all that. We really think that that's the foundation for successful community. You know, one of the things that I learned from the Power Brothers is that we don't essentially have a professional class in the world area. Compared to other cities that are our size, we have a population of about 125,000. Uh, rest- we're dominated by restaurants, services, industry, and construction, which we know construction is pretty simple. Mm-hmm. So we want to help provide that startup and entrepreneurial ecosystem. Two is community collaboration, inspiring neighborhood transformation. Like our goal with Genesis Block is to be like a neighborhood franchise. We don't want to develop like those huge rework or spaces. I'm telling you, we want to go neighborhood by neighborhood. So the neighborhood entrepreneurs, the neighborhood small business, or the neighborhood community will have this location to collaborate and interact and work on the solution for the neighborhood. And three is to create and use creativity to expand the understanding of our world. And that's what it's centered on, like Tracy was talking about earlier. We want people to be moving forward and expanding. You know, the universe is expanding. That's going to be one of the three points of my ability to work with Tracy. We want to inspire all minds and become like minds in the expansion of. What it is to be moving forward. Genesis Block, <laughs> ILM.com. But right now we're very uh, engaged on Facebook. Yeah. So okay. go to Genesis Block ILM on Facebook as well. You can go to 
at Gerard Newkirk's page, Tracy Newkirk's page, and uh, we get a lot of interaction there. And we're also on Twitter and Instagram with the same channel. Uh, but we look forward to because we're going to be asking uh, for a lot of feedback from our members and potential members in the community. Well, great. Well, I'll be sure to uh, I'll be sure to tag both of you as well as Genesis Block and uh, the your your primary businesses as well or your additional businesses as well, mm -hmm. uh, so people can uh, can see all that you're involved in. And we're so fortunate to have the two of you in the Greater Wilmington area. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, your plans as you as I know Gerard, you and I've talked a little bit separate and separate occasions. I'm looking forward to your long term plans. It's exciting. Uh, it's Absolutely. exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, perfect. Well, thanks so much uh, for being on. And uh, I'm hopeful that tonight's uh, 6.30 will be extremely, uh, extremely beneficial for everyone involved tonight. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Nice Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time.